Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Dadich. I am a Professor of Law and Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Today, students, we are going to talk about a, a very emerging business aspect that is the IPR, intellectual property. So, the point is historically, when we started developing our businesses, we were mainly relying on the products and services itself, but gradually with the complexity of the market, few intangible properties like the patent, trademark, copyright, industrial designs, they become very, very important. Like for example, if I ask you, uh, what is the price of Apple phone, like uh, your answer could be 60,000, 70,000, okay. But if I ask you, what is the cost of the hardware? In that 70,000 rupees phone, the hardware cost is not more than 5 to 6,000 rupees. The remaining thing that is the intangible, that is not like you cannot touch it, that is the patent or designs. So, you can easily see that now we are moving into era where the intangible property has become very, very important in the businesses and whether you work in any sector, you will find the importance and value of IPR. So, in today's lecture, we will talk about the introduction of IPR, especially we will deal with patent, trademark and copyright and then we will see how people can make money out of their IPR. So, what is intellectual property? So, intellectual property is a property that arises from the human intellect, it is a product of human creation. Okay? So, you need to understand what is IP. IP is basically where people are using their intellect, you know, so, suppose you are creating a new medicine. Okay? So, that is a human intellect, you are writing a new book, that is a human intellect, you are creating a beautiful logo, you know, logo for your business or you are creating a beautiful slogan, you know, very impressive uh, marketing line for your company. So, everything is basically human creation, here there is no external factor, there is no raw material or supply or machinery, it is completely the human creation. If you go back a little bit, you know, historical aspect of IPR, uh, in the history, like, you know, people used to write a lot of books, people had lot of inventions, but nobody tried to create a law like IP. You know, that in that time before like 600 years, 700 years back, we used to believe that the knowledge belongs to everyone, you know, because people never tried to uh, secure exclusive rights on their knowledge, inventions and intellect. However, with the development of the technology, like uh, for example, when the printing press was invented in China and finally is reached to uh, Europe, especially in Italy, then it became very easy uh, to reprint the books. You know, like suppose in, before that uh, invention, if you want to create a copy of books, you have to write it down. But with the invention, now you can print maybe 100, 1000, 50,000, 1 lakh, 5 lakh, 10 lakh copies. So, now with the intellect, you can make money also. So, that was the idea, then the people started developing this concept. Now, we need to protect humans creation. If you do not create the, if you do not protect the human creation, then people would like to go for free writing. So, free writing is a concept like for example, you write a book okay? and if you do not have copyright on it, I can also copy it and give my name and sell in the market. If that is allowed, then no author will write a book because then there is no protection of his intellectual capabilities. Same thing with the patent. If you invent something new, you know, for the solution, for a new solution, and if the society or the law does not give you protection, then anybody can copy, change the name, and start selling it. Okay, you create a big brand, like you know, for example, there are a lot of good brands in the market. When you go to market, you see the McDonald's, you see the uh, Apple, you see Samsung or you see so many brands. So, you recognize those companies and their values through the brand name. 
so if people start copying their brand name then it will be very difficult for a customer to know uh, who is real and who is fake okay so intellectual property law is very very important not only for the protection of human creation and human intellect but for the consumer as well as for the inventors ip uh, comprises two distinct forms one is literary and artistic work so that comes under the uh, copyright okay and then industrial ipr that's a patent and trademark design rights geographical indications and so many others so first see what is the literary and artistic works literary and artistic work property refers to both the direct rights of the authors or creator as well as to the encompassing ancillary rights therefore literary and artistic property protects work of the mind these beings original acts of the creation which express the author or creator's personality it applies to works of the mind like there are books painting musical compositions plays movies radio tv program performance and other artistic works how they are protected they are protected by copyright so suppose if you write a movie you know you you, you write a script of movie that script is protected under copyright if suppose if you perform you know you you create a new form of dance that that uh, that, that is pro protected by the copyright and what is industrial property uh, this photo is taken by the uh, the you know the authority of the ip authority in india industrial property describes physical matter that is the product of an idea or a concept for commercial purposes see the idea of uh, literary is not only to uh, help the people to have some intellectual discussions they can also make per uh, money but here when we talk about the industrial ipr their main objective is to make profit out of it and how they are protected like by patented objects by trademarks industrial designs trade secrets layout designs and geographical indications so here you can see like the coca cola uh, then uh, mcdonalds orange you know all these things you can easily see they are protected by the ipr so industrial design if you see the uh, bottle of coca cola the way it is designed that is also protected no one can uh, create the same type of bottle by selling uh, the cold drinks okay patents like you said uh, aspirin you know aspirin is a medicine so uh, people can get patent on the particular medicine then trademark like coca cola when you when you see the coca cola written in a specific manner you identify that yeah this is the real coca cola trade secrets like you can say uh, mcdonalds you know so you really don't know what is in the mcdonalds it's a trade secret you know when you go to any mcdonalds in across the globe you find the same test in every mcdonalds okay so trade secret is there even in coca cola they have trade secrets so nobody know that what is in the coca cola it's a very much protected and that comes under the ipr geographical indications okay so like for example if you go and buy the banarsi sari or any like you know a french champagne so there are few products which which only in a local geographical area they can be produced they are very specific to that area like basmati rice so in a very specific part of india and pakistan basmati rice can be produced any other rice which is uh, produced outside of that area cannot use the term basmati rice okay so these type of things you can see uh, they are protected under the ipr intellectual property right gives ip rights a protection as well as help them to exploit and control their ipr so uh, once you have ipr what do you want to do first you want to control it that nobody should use my ipr without my consent second you want to exploit your ipr you want to make money out of your ipr because you have invested your time your energy your resources to maybe write a book to write a poem or to invent something to create a design so when you are putting your resources obviously you want some return you know so and that return can be uh, the money the recognition valuation and all these things the exclusive right granted by state to prevent others from using manufacturing distributing inventions processes applications new and original designs trademarks new plant varieties database and artistic and literature work 
such a person is known the rights owner or right holder. So, once you have that type of IPR then you have right that an other person cannot use it, other person cannot manufacture it, they cannot distrib distribute it without your permission. Okay? So, these type of protections are given by the IPR to the IP right holder. Nature of IPR. IPR has become an issue of wide and serious discussion with the formation of the general agreement of trade related aspects of intellectual property trips agreement under the Uruguay right agreement of the GATT, now the World Trade Organization. So, the World Trade Organization as you know, because see the IPRs are intangible. So, you can move one, uh, sub suppose like I want to copy your book, you know, so then I can easily copy from this country to that country, you know, there is no national boundary to confine the IPR for tangible goods like the property you cannot take from one country to another country easily. But for the intangible rights, you can easily copy anything and move outside of that country. That is why we have created international intellectual property law that comes under the uh, World Trade Organization and there is a special organization called WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, which manages the international intellectual property rights. So, India is also part of the WTO and the TRIPS agreement and the WIPO. India is in the priority watch list of USA under special 301 system. Uh, so, in, India is very important country uh, in terms of creating IPR. IPR insists on some amount of novelty or originality to gain protection. Intellectual property is a duration specific. So, all IPRs having some deadline like they have some expiring period. So, for example, copy uh, 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 patent is only for 20 years. After 20 years that patent or that invention will become the part of the public domain anybody can use it. Same thing in the copyright. Uh, after the death of the author or the copyright owner a maximum 50 years, then it will become the public authority. It does not provide uh, a, perpetual, a perpetual and absolute monopoly over the property. What is, proper, what is protected with respect to IPR is the use or value of ideas, expressed ideas. However, the bundle of rights constituting IPR is not our abstract ideas, but rather than our physical concrete or tangible manifestation of these ideas. So, copyright is not for the ideas like you have developed an idea like okay, your idea is about writing a novel on uh, romantic stories. So, that is an idea you know you cannot get complete control over the ideas you can get control only over the content. Rights under patent law includes the right to manufacture, distribute, while rights under copyright law extend to the right of distribution, publication, all of which deal with concrete embodiments of the ideas and not the abstract ideas themselves. So, types of IPR like you can see the first is patent, then trademark, geographical indication, industrial design, layout design, plant variety protection and copyright. So, let us start with the patent. Designed by Thomas Jefferson in 1790 to provide a brief legal monopoly to give the inventor an opportunity to get an invention into the market and recoup development cost before competitors enter the market. Patent is a monopoly right granted by the law for the exclusive use of intellectual property to one or more individual. The instrument by which such grant is known as a patent. The patent to whom a patent is granted a patentee. Okay. So, you understand uh, designed by Thomas Jefferson, so the first patent law was enacted by the Thomas Jefferson and the idea was that the inventor, the person who is inventing something, he must have the full control on that invention and recoup you know the development course like suppose he has invested some money on it, time on it, resources, energy. So, he should get all the benefits out of that invention. Suppose you have invested one year of your life, uh, 10 lakh rupees of the investment, but later on you want to see that I want to make money out of my IPR. So, then until unless you get full control on your IPR or patent, you cannot make money. Section 2M of the Indian Patent Act 1970 defines patent as Patent means a new product or process involving an in inventive step and capable of industrial 
application. So, there are three things. One is it must be a new product or process involving an inventive step and second capable of industrial application. So, now try to understand the Indian patent law. Invention, as I said that the first thing is that there has to be some invention to qualify as a patent. So, invention relates to a process or product or both, okay. involves an inventive step, be capable of industrial application and finally, a machine. Invention patentable if it is new, it is useful, not obvious and capable of industrial application. So, these are the conditions to go for a patent under the Indian patent law. Okay. Indian Patent Act 1970 deals with grant of revocation of patent items not patentable. So, there are few things which is not patentable like for example, anything relating to atomic energy that is not patentable under the Indian law like the softwares, computer softwares they are not patentable under Indian law. Product patent they are patented like you can get the patent on the final product or you can get the patent on the process patent also like you are getting patent on the process rather than the final product. So, if anybody is creating that product, they cannot follow your process without your consent. Okay. Patent period is the tw same 20 years, rights and obligations of the patentee okay, and working of a patent, compulsory licensing and exceptions. Okay. Duration, the term of patent is 20 years from the date of filing for all types of inventions priority date first to file. So, you know the patent is not for forever, you can get uh, exclusive right on your invention is only for 20 years and the 20 year period will start from the date of filing for all types of invention. Okay. So, once you file the patent, maybe patent will get some time 1 year, 2 year, 3 year, but at the time of the filing of the patent, the time will start. The date of the patent is the date of the filing the application for patent. The term of patent is counted from this date only. Fee for the filing patent. The government fee for filing a patent in India is rupees 750 for individuals and 300 uh, for the legal entities. No fee for first and second year. Renewal fee on yearly basis is required to be paid for third and uh, 20th year for keeping the patent in force. Patent lapses if renewal fees is not paid within the prescribed period. Patent holders in India. The list of top 10 patent holders in India comprise only pharmaceutical and biotech companies. <clears throat> in India, 180 patents are held by Council of Scientific and Industrial Research followed by Renbexy. While the top 10 patent holders across the world are IT companies in India, no IT firms has patents. So, it is not like that they, they do not have patents, but compared to other international IT companies, they have very less patents. Relevant case laws. In this case, the Supreme Court held the object of patent is to encourage scientific research, new technology and industrial progress. Grant of exclusive privilege to own, use or sell the method or the product patented for a limited period stimulates new invention of commercial utility. The price of the grant of monopoly is the disclosure of the invention at the patent office which after the expiry of the fixed period of the monopoly passes into the public domain. In this case, the Supreme Court really uh, gave a very good observation about the uh, reason of patent. Students, when someone says that it is a 20 year period, very long time and someone is having dominance or complete monopoly on that particular technology, so then this really hampers the innovation process. But just try to understand the uh, value of that particular efforts or resources or human power which someone invest on in inventing new things. In the absence of that type of protection, if someone invest money, time, resources and if he or she is not able to get the legal protection for his inventions, for his efforts and hard work as well as risk also, we should not ignore the element of risk in the patent because when you are doing some scientific research, you really do not know what will be the outcome. Maybe after a few years, you realize that there is no new invention is coming out from our scientific experiment. So, the risk element is also there and the second element is until and unless 
people are making good money out of the patents and intellectual property how they will get more incentives to invest more on the new advanced technologies so uh, this is the reasoning of the patent and the another reasoning given by the supreme court is that this knowledge which someone is bringing in people's domain suppose if i have some invention and if i know that uh, I do not get any legal protection, then I will not like to disclose that scientific development to the public or uh, to the society. I will use it for my own personal purpose. In that scenario, society will never come to know what is the scientific development in that particular area. But as per the provisions of Patent Act, after 20 years, that knowledge, that skills, invention, innovation, everything go to the public domain and then anybody can use it. So, for example, there are so many medicines in uh, current period where now after 20 years the pharmaceutical companies uh, have no patent rights. So, now all generic forms they are using those that uh, technology that uh, patent and those uh, medicines uh, for the commercial purposes at very low rate. So, now let us move to the trademark. What is the trademark? The trademark is an object, uh, is a mark basically or a slogan or a sign so that people can identify a particular company and its quality. Trademark Act 1999 defines trademark as a mark capable of being represented graphically and which is capable of distinguish the goods or services of one person from those of others and may include shape of goods, their packaging and combination of colors. So, you try to you need to understand what is the trademark here it is a very larger concept it is not like a simple the logo it includes so many things and the objective is that the trademark must create a situation for the consumer so that they are capable to, uh, to identify graphically a particular company uh, company's logo. So, the important thing is for any consumer is to capable to distinguish the goods or services of one person from those and others. So, suppose when you go to market you want to buy a particular uh, product for example. So, how will you identify that this, pro this product belongs to that company. So, when you see the logo or some something like the geographical uh, you know presence of uh, that particular company then you rely and you trust that this product belongs to this company and then you are ready to invest your money. But what if suppose there are uh, same type of trade same type of logo slogans are used by different companies in the market how will you identify that uh, which uh, company owns this real product. This mark includes device, brand, he heading, label, ticket, name, signature, word, letter, numerical, shape of goods, packaging, combination of colors and any combination thereof. So, brand, so here when you say the mark is not only the simple logo, it includes a very large level of uh, large number of list here and it can be a label, it can be ticket, it can be a signature also, you know in, in some like you know if you go to buy ribbon then you see there is a signature and through the signature you identify that this the product belongs to this particular company. Brand refers to a name, term, sign, symbol or des design or a combination of them intended to identify the goods or service of one seller or group of sellers and to differentiate them from those two competitors like McDonald's for restaurants, cycle brands and all these things. Okay. So, the, the objective is that as a customer you must be able to distinguish one brand to another brand that is the objective of trademark. Brand name, brand name is that part of the brand which can be vocalized the utterable you know like the brand name you must be able to speak that name you know there are few things you do not need to speak you just visualize it okay. like some logos you know when you see the logo of Apple you do not uh, you, you visualize that logo, but if you uh, see a brand like McDonald's then you must be able to see this, but at the same time there are some brands where you have to vocalize also you know. Brand name is that part of brand which can be recognized, but is not utterable such a symbol, design or distinctive color or lettering. 
device refers to pictorial representations like animals, birds, landscape, building, you know. So, there are so many uh, companies which is represented through their uh, these type of devices like the animal, birds, landscape, building and all these things. So, through that picture you identify that this uh, product belongs to that particular company. Letter as a mark is the identify created of the letter form and has its inbuilt strength of distinctiveness and individuality like the IBM, GM, IEL, BEE, 3M etc. So, when you see IBM then you understand that yeah this is IBM like you cannot create a new company like IBM. So, like for example, you see here types of trademark. So, here <coughs> Coca Cola bottle shape and the name the Coca Cola, here McDonald's the symbol and I am loving it that is a slogan that is also trademark. <coughs> here orange it is a it is a telecommunication company in UK. So, you can see the color of this particular company that is his trademark. Then logo type you know you, uh, you can see this uh, car company their logo is very identified like when you see the Mercedes logo you can easily identify that this is Mercedes. Trademark Act 1919 the act came into effect on September 15, to, uh, 2003 it replaced the trademark and Mercedes mark Act 1958 it extend to the whole of India it shall come into force on such date as the central government may publish. Trademark registration how to go for the registration? Uh, yeah, in the patent we did not discuss about the registration process, but that is very simple in all types of intellectual property more or less the same thing. In the patent when you want to uh, go for the patent you have to submit your application to the patent authority. So, a patent authority is the headquarter is in Chennai then there are some regional offices and as per your reason you need to go to the patent authority and submit your patent application. So, in patent of application you can submit your provisional application or complete application. Provisional application means that you have done some research and your research is under process, but you, you are almost about to reach to the conclusion, but uh, everything is not so done so far. So, you do not want to lose your priority date you know the priority date is a concept that before you if someone uh, submits the same type of technological development to the patent authority then you will lose your scientific invention then you cannot go for patent ok. So, in that scenario you can submit your provisional application and uh, within a reasonable period of time given by the patent authority you submit your complete application. So, the trademark agent uh, you can file your trademark application through uh, sorry patent application through the patent agent as well as the lawyers. So, once your application is submitted then patent authority will examine your application and they will see the prior art in the prior art condition is that first they will check whether you have invented something new or not. If that invention is already uh, present in the uh, society so first obviously they will see whether it is a real or not something more inventive step or not. If it is not then they will ask you to submit more document they will ask you more questions and finally, if they are agreed then they will issue the patent ok. So, this is the process for the patent application. Trademark registration uh, trademark and service mark are used before registration. Registration of trademark is not a compulsory requirement of the law ok. So, it is not see patent if you do not get your patent rights from the patent authority you cannot claim any legal protection. However, trademark and copyright they are not compulsory to register. However, if you do registration you get some extra legal protection from the law. The controller general of patents design and trademark act appointed by central government is the registrar of the trademark. A registrar of trademark shall be shall be kept in office registered trademark details shall be entered into the register. Once trademark is accepted allocated should advertise in its prescribed manner. The registration of trademark is a uh, if valid gives its proprietor the exclusive right to the use of that trademark in relation to the goods or services in respect of which the trademark is registered and to obtain relief in respect of infringement of the trademark. So, that is very important thing when you apply for your trademark 
like suppose you have created a logo you want to start a new uh, startup you know you, you, you education uh, level start, a, a education tech startup or fintech startup or any type of startup so when you file your trademark application they will ask you okay please tell us what type of business you will be doing or you are doing so you will maybe give the list of businesses okay these seven businesses we are doing right now and in future we are planning to do maybe next uh, uh, 20 or 25 related businesses so whatever you write in your uh, trademark application if you get your trademark in those areas you will get exclusive rights but if you miss any area or if someone is using your trademark in some other areas which was not mentioned in your trademark application then you cannot stop that person okay so you need to be very careful while you are designing your patent uh, trademark application okay and then finally certificate will be issued by the trademark authority duration of and fees of trademark trademark is valid for 10 years from the date of application which may be renewed for further period of 10 years on payment of the prescribed fees service mark trademark are reserved exclusively for the owners for the 17 years and it can it can also be renewed the government fees is 2500 for each class of goods and services trademark infringement counterfeiting and dilution infringement a mark that is likely to cause confusion with a trademark already existing in the marketplace. So, what is the infringement of the trademark? Suppose you have created a logo, you know, maybe your logo is like banana, like for example, you know, we are selling banana shakes or anything. So, your, your logo is banana and someone is creating the same type of logo or trying to get the same type of name also. Like for example, your company's name is Apple, you know, the Apple is selling mobiles. So, if someone tries to sell the mobile in the market with the name of Apple, you know, so Apple and Apple, so it creates confusion in people's mind that which one is real, okay. And so, this is very common that a lot of people, they like to start their businesses with the name of very successful companies, organizations, okay. So, they, they want to create confusion in people's mind and they always like to pretend that they are the real uh, honor of that particular brand and uh, people should buy from them. So, it creates confusion. If someone is doing it, then that is the infringement of trademark. Counterfeiting, the deliberate copying of a mark, like you, you will find many fake products in market, you know, like the fake Reebok shoes, Adidas shoes, you know. So, a lot of people, they know that people like, people cannot buy very expensive products. So, like suppose a Reebok shoes is like 10,000 rupees. So, the same type of shoes in the copy, you know, not the original one, but the copy is sold in the market for the 500 rupees, okay. So, this is called counterfeiting and that company can take action civil and criminal against those people who are selling their counterfeiting product in the market. Dilution, the value of the mark is substantially reduced through competition or through the likelihood of confusion from another mark. That, see, the dilution is very important. So, uh, you will find that many companies which are not protecting their trademark and once they become very famous, lot of people start creating, you know, the same type of name and uh, in, in a reasonable period of time, that particular trademark loses its value and it is difficult for customers to identify that who owns what. Then they start believing that, okay, uh, this product belongs to that owner, but in reality, maybe that guy is absolutely new player in the market. and has no connection with your business. So, one has to be very careful while they are uh, going for trademark, while they are protecting their trademark because business dilution, reputational dil dilution is a very, very big issue for many businesses. Offenses include, included uh, uh, falsifying and falsely applying trademark, trade description and punishable by imprisonment and fine. So, sometime you know that you are not going to get the trademark. So, you start, uh, you know, submitting wrong document, uh, false document. So, that can also be a civil and criminal offense. Now, let us move to the copyright. So, copyright is a very historical right before the trademark and the uh, patent. As I discussed earlier, the origin of modern or I can say the western style of protecting the intellectual property started with the copyright. It initially, it started in Italy then it moved to France, then the UK and then across the globe. 
So, copyright is a monopoly right restraining others from exercising the right which has been confirmed on the honor of copyright. It is a negative right, meaning thereby it is prohibitory in nature. It is right to prevent others from copying or reproducing the work. The objective object of copyright is to encourage authors, composers and artists to create original works by rewarding them the exclusive right for a specific period to reproduce the work for publishing and selling them to the public. The moral base of copyright rests in the eighth, eighth commandment that you should not steal. The idea is that if any artist, philosopher, any uh, singer, if they are creating any artistic work, people should not steal it, you know, so that, so that we can survive with our good art and culture. Copyright is not a single right. It is a bundle of rights in the same work. For example, in the case of literary work, copyright consists of reproduction in the print media, the right of dramatic and cine cine cinematographic versions, the right of translation, adaption, abridgment, and the right of public performance. So, when suppose you publish a book, you know, or so then you have all the other related rights that nobody can copy your uh, book, nobody can translate your book without your permission or nobody can make a movie on that uh, book without your approval. So, copyright is quite comprehensive right. Cop copyright consists not merely of the right of the reproduction, it also consists right to work derived from the original work. Rights like the right of public performance, the recording rights and the broadcasting rights. Such related rights are called neighboring rights. The Indian Copyright Act 1957. The Indian Copyright Act 1957 governs the system of copyright in the India. Okay. Amended in 1982, 1984, 1992, 1994 and 1999. Meaning, it is a right which grants protection to the unique expression of ideas. Okay. It is a unique expression of ideas, but the, at the same time as I told you earlier, it is not protecting the ideas itself. It is an expression of idea which is protected not the ideas itself. Okay. The term original in the copyright means that the work originated with the author. There is no requirement for novelty or uniqueness is as the in the patent law. In the patent law it has to be completely unique. There has to be some novelty, there has to be some inventive step. In copyright suppose if someone has written a very nice book on war you know the 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 in indo pakistan war 1971 so the topic is same maybe the another author would like to write the same book on the same topic the same circumstances but with different perspective with different language in that scenario it's not necessary that someone has already written a book on indo pak 1971 war so now you cannot write it that is not the requirement under the copyright law Copyright law protects the expression of the idea, not the idea itself. The idea is that let us write a book on 1971 Indo-Pak war. That is the idea. Nobody can get copyright on that particular idea. Compared to patent law, that particular invention is protected. Okay? Nobody can uh, do, use that invention uh, without your approval. But in copyright, you need to understand it because it is an easy law to get, like you do not need to do any inventive step. So, the idea is not protected, only expression of idea is protected. What is covered under by the copyright? So, you can say books, literary, then films, then dramatic, musical, artistic and sound recording. So, all types of intellectual and artistic expressions are covered under the copyright law. What is not covered by the copyright law? That is very important like the ideas. As I said, idea of writing a book on Indo-Pakistan 1971 war is not protected under the copyright. Facts, you know, whatever facts they are in the society or hist historical fact, political fact, economic facts, nobody can get the copyright on those facts. Recipes, you know, like lot of recipes are available in the already in public domain, you know, like how to make omelette, you know. So, you know exactly how to make the omelette. So, nobody can get the copyright on that particular uh, recipe, okay. Work lacking originality like the phone book, you know, if you create a phone book, you cannot get the copyright. 
names, titles or short phrases, you know that is again not under the copyright. Exceptions, where a work is made by the author in the course of his employment by the proprietor of a newspaper, magazine uh, for publication therein such proprietor will be the first owner. So, you need to understand when you are working with your organization or your company okay, and company is paying you for that particular intellectual creation. In that scenario, you cannot claim copyright for that right because then the right will go to the owner. Okay. Where a photographer is, photograph is taken or a painting or a portrait drawn or an engraving on a sign film made for a consideration at the instance of any person then such person shall be the first owner. So, suppose you are making a painting okay, and someone is paying you for that thing, then you will not have a copyright on that particular in, uh, per, uh, artistic expression. Okay. So, if any paid uh, artistic philo, uh, intellectual work is done, then the person who is paying, he will have the copyright or the intellectual property. When a work is made in the course of the author's employment under a contract or service or apprenticeship, the employer will be the first owner as it as is very simple, employer is paying, so he will have the copyright. When where any person has discovered any address or speech in public, the person will be the first owner of the copyright. In the case of government work, government is the first copyright or always. Registration, how to do registration of the copyright? Register a copyright by completing a simple application form along with the appropriate fee, need not send a copy of your work. It may appear with the same title, but if each work has been created independently, each will have its own copyright protection. Although the registration of copyright is not, and not necessary, but why registration is important that in case if someone infringes your copyright, like you say okay, he has copied my book, you know he has copied my poem. So, if you have already got the copyright and that poem is with the government, so they can check you know it has some evidentiary value, you know it has some lot of evidentiary value. Second, if you want to go for damages like the compensation without registration, you cannot go for the compensation. Without registration, you can only stop part other parties to use your uh, intellectual creation without your consent. But if you are looking for a compensation or damages, then you have to go for the registration. Duration of the copyright, copyright lasts for the author's lifetime plus 50 years from the end of the calendar year in which the author dies. So, it is a very very long uh, intellectual property you can see 50 years for films and sound recording, 25 years for typographical arrangement of a published edition. Copyright protection always expires on December 31st of the last calendar year of protection. So, we have seen patent, we have seen trademark, we have seen the copyright. Okay. So, now the next question arises that what to do with these intellectual property, you know, because you are investing your time, money, your resources, your employers are also doing the same thing. So, ultimately uh, you want to make some money out of your intellectual property. So, how to make money out of your IPR, because when you are having IPR, nobody can use it. So, if you want that people should use it, you want that people should sell it, then you have to transfer your technology, you have to transfer your IPR, like you have to assign your intellectual property rights to someone else, so that other person can sell it, uh, do the commercial activity and you get your royalty, Okay, you get some money. So, it is like a win-win situation for the both parties. Technology transfer is the process of sharing of the skills knowledge, technologies, methods of manufacturing, sample of manufacturing and facilities among governments and other institutions to ensure the scientific and technological developments are access accessible to wider range of users who can be the further develop and exploit the technology into new products, process, application, material or services. So, the objective of technology transfer is not only to make money for the owner. But what we want that other people must be able to use that technology, maybe they can add some value, they can create some new product, maybe they can create more uh, quality in services through your technology. That is why the law expects that people should share these intellectual property rights with other people, but obviously not free of course, they will get some money. 
but the expectation is that you cannot deny everyone you know if you are denying everyone uh, and because of your denial especially in patent not in copyright and trademark but in patent if and uh, the society at large is suffering in that scenario uh, uh, people can go for technology transfer agreement in india technology transfer is an important means by which developing countries gain access to technologies that are new to them okay without technology transfer uh, most of the developing countries will not get access to the new emerging technologies then all developed countries and the big companies they would like to keep their technologies with themselves only okay so once you share technology with someone you cannot get it back it's very difficult okay so you are ready to share your technology your invention if you are getting something in return most technology transfer has been developed and developing countries through commercial technology transfer by the private sector by opening the indian economy lpg liberalization privatization and globalization policy 1991 several indian companies are posed for different types of finance technical and other forms of collaborations though they enter with proper technology transfer uh, some are not successful the different reasons technology transfer agreement so tta is the core of intellectual property rights okay because once you start sharing your intellectual property right with other people then it becomes a win win situation for you it's good because you are making some money second it's good for you because people are using your technology you are getting more recognition you are getting more value in the society on the other side the people who want to use your technology your artistic you know uh, music dance uh, all other things you know the even the trademark you know if somebody wants to get your franchise like suppose like they want to use your trademark so they want to go for the franchise so that can be also one type of technology transfer it can be purchased through indigenous or important sources india has opted for judicious mix of indigenous and important technology okay so for any country if they want to develop they have to develop their research and development okay they have to develop their technology so now there are two ways to get a technology either you create your own technology in your country or you go and take country a uh, tech technology from outside okay so india has decided that we will do both you know so we will uh, bring technology from outside through the technology transfer agreement as well as we will create our own technology purchase of technology is com commonly called technology transfer and is generally covered by technology transfer agreement so if you see the technology transfer agreement i would like to add some more values so there are different types of technology transfer one you give your complete technology to someone like a complete license you know so you say okay now this uh, for example patent i am talking about you say that this is my technology and i am completely transferring this technology to you now you will become the owner and i will not have any legal right on it so that's a one part of technology or you can say okay i am giving you uh, not exclusive non exclusive uh patent you know that uh, you can use it but i am not transferring the ownership you know i will remain the owner just like in housing sector when you allow someone to stay in your house as a tenant but you don't transfer your ownership okay but in a tangible property like in house you cannot allow five people to stay in your house there has to be one or two family maximum in your house but the beauty of technology transfer agreement that you can restrict uh the geographical areas also like for example you say that okay i am giving you this technology but you can use this technology only in delhi uh, rajasthan up and bihar and you know madhya pradesh in south you cannot use it like for example i am just talking about indian market or you can restrict okay you will use this technology only in karnataka not outside of karnataka then you find someone else in delhi and say okay now you can sell this business in two states so as for the technology transfer agreement you can you can identify that who will own what okay so that's a one part so you can choose your geographical areas second in the technology transfer agreement you can also put clauses regarding the revenue sharing model either you give the complete technology 
at one go you get your money and you are out you have nothing to do with the business or you can say that okay you will give me suppose like a like you know uh, like 1 crore rupees in advance and then i will get royalty on your sale okay so if you sell i will get 2% 4% whatever mutually agreed number so that can be the another example of technology transfer agreement second you can say i am giving you exclusive license or non exclusive license exclusive license that in this area okay in this domain nobody else will be able to sell the product only you will sell the product okay so you can define the boundaries of the business geographical boundaries okay as well as the revenue sharing model like it will be revenue sharing model partnership model or it's just like a one time sell so we have discussed technology transfer agreement no i will again you know revise the entire ppt for your general understanding so first thing very quickly i will go through again what is intellectual property rights so ipr is a legal protection for the inventions and artistic expressions of the people okay and there are two types of literary and artistic work and industrial property and literary and artistic prop, uh, work like the music dance theater or novel performance and uh, uh, movies they are all un protected under the copyright and industrial property like the patent trademark industrial design trade secrets layout geographical indications these are all the areas where we are trying to protect the industry or the corporates then ipr is basically an idea that the exclusive right by the state the state grants are ipr like no individual can get the ipr by its own or any corporate or any individual cannot grant the ipr it's a basically given by the state state means the government by the intellectual property authority in any country however i would like to say you one thing that is very important to understand that there is nothing called international intellectual property law okay though we have trips agreement under the wto which basically harmonize the intellectual property law in at the global level when i say harmonize harmonize means that they set the minimum standards that like minimum standards okay for the uh, patent the duration would be 20 years so if someone want they can keep it more than 20 but not less than 20 okay so trips agreement is basically general understanding of the parties however if you want to file it uh, suppose like the patent in india and if you get a patent in india you will not get the protection in other countries so if someone is copying your patent your copyright or your trademark in another country where you have no registration of your ipr you cannot stop them okay so one has to be very careful while they are designing their intellectual property law strategy they have to identify relevant markets like for example if i say oil and gas uh, sector so in that particular sector you need to identify those countries where oil and gas protection happens okay because then you will find your competitors in that area and if you have invented something new in that particular sector you need to go and get the patent in all those countries okay so there is nothing called international uh, international patent law international copyright international trademark it's all national and the ipr as i discussed it's uh, governed under the wto and that uh, wipo and these are the uh, things so patent is the most powerful intellectual property law because most of the financial transactions financial value is created by the patent only okay so the the first patent law was drafted by thomas jefferson in 1790 and the idea was that we need to give a brief legal monopoly brief and i say again 20 years so it's a brief monopoly to the inventor for the opportunity to create the invention okay so this was the right and then india we enacted our indian patent act in 1970 and our indian patent law uh, was very very helpful especially the 1970 act was very helpful for the indian pharmaceutical industry so if you see the uh, like i give you the case study so if you see the growth of pharmaceutical industry in india after 1947 so till 1970s or 80s india was importing 
almost 90 percent of its pharmaceutical requirements. So, we were not producing any pharma or medicines in our country, very few medicines. Why? Because we used to have product patent regime. Okay. The product patent regime that all multinational companies from abroad, they got the product patent in India, like suppose a particular medicine. Okay. So, now you cannot create this medicine at all. Okay. So, Indian government changed their patent regime in 1970 and they introduced the process patent only. They say okay, you can get patent on the process, but not on the product fine. But after the 1970s when the Indian companies were able to create generic medicines, okay, they were able to create the generic medicines, then in that scenario, in that scenario uh, the Indian pharmaceutical companies changed the entire ecosystem. And now, India is not only uh, exporting pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical medicines in other developing and poor countries like in Africa or South America or Asia, we are almost like self reliant on the medicines. Still, we are e exporting, importing few medicines, but Indian law has made the pharmaceutical sector so dynamic because of the change of the law, they were able to fulfill the requirement of our country. And second thing, second thing that intellectual property law gives the incentive to the people to go for more innovation and inventions. So, in when, uh, patent we have seen then after that we talked about the trademark law. So, in the trademark is more like the logo, sign, signature, ticket, name, anything which can create an impression in people's mind that okay, this brand belongs to this company and you start recognizing that company through the brand only you know and then you also add your value system with that particular brand. Okay. So, if someone is trying to copy someone's brand to create confusion in customers mind that is prohibited under the trademark law. And then finally, we talked about the copyright, copyright is for the artistic and literary work okay. and uh, this is like you can go for the copyright, but you cannot go for the patent and you cannot go for the idea. You can get copyright only on the expression of an idea. And finally, we talked about the technology transfer agreement. Okay. So, if you read your TTA very carefully, then you can understand that how technologies are being transferred from one company to another company and how companies can get license from the other company to develop new products and new services. So, I think this is a win-win situation for the both parties if they can use each either each other's technology to develop their new products and services. So, I wish I hope that this lecture has given you very good understanding of the patent law. Thank you very much.